whole story. Placed on record. And last night I had uh, explained to the Senate the practical difficulty we find ourselves in that we were here up to around midnight. We had to steal a few hours of rest and now are here again. And you must terminate your proceedings today. So it is not humanly possible for us to place those materials on record between now and the time this trial ends. So in the circumstances, we pray for two options subject to whatever finds favor with you. One, we could place the material on record later on after we adjourn today. That will give problems that the other side might equally tell you they have not seen it, it has not been tested before this forum, so that will raise its own problems. Alternatively, you could allow us, as we cross-examine the witnesses called by the governor, to raise, to cross-examine on those additional materials, and tied to that, you could excuse us so that because my concern when I was raising the issue is I didn't want the record to reflect that I was given the opportunity to file additional material, but I did not take up that opportunity when the reason for my failure to take it is that it was humanly impossible within the time frames fixed by law. That was the request, Chair. Uh, the counsel for the governor. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Chairman and Honorable Committee. The representative for the governor, as yesterday, my name is Manassas Mwangi, the lead counsel. We appear together with Mr. Elias Mutuma and Mr. Robert Mutebei. On our part, we do not have any procedural issue that uh, would like to address at this point. However, I would like to respond to the issue raised by the Council for the County Assembly with the kind permission of Honorable Chair. Yesterday, the team for the governor supplied materials and uh, a supplementary affidavit, which was allowed. It had been served on the council for the county assembly the day before yesterday. In the course of uh, arguing whether or not those materials should be placed on record, the council for the county assembly indicated they had produced through those materials and they had seen there is nothing in it and they would add no value. They were all aware all along what is the contents of the evidentiary materials that we added in these proceedings. Honorable Chairman, we are opposed to the two suggestions that uh, the Council for the County Assembly invites this committee to allow them uh, to exercise. One, they had an opportunity to address those materials yesterday in the course of uh, fielding their witnesses. They would have referred their witnesses to the materials that were new and let them comment, thrashing them. In fact, that happened after the examination in chief and towards the end of that part of examination in chief the witnesses for the county assembly were taken through the bundles of documents produced by the governor and that was the opportunity for the council for the county assembly to introduce any evidence that would controvert the evidentiary material that was supplied as a supplementary <coughs> honorable chairman there was another opportunity and another way out. The Council for the County Assembly would have prayed and made an application before this trade, uh, committee and request to be allowed to field a witness, either with a very short witness statement 
and the rest of the testimony be taken on oath from the witness stand. And Honorable Chairman, we had yesterday so many witnesses who came and departed from the witness statements they had supplied us, and they gave totally new evidence. We did not object to that. They had that opportunity, and they did not exercise it. If material is introduced after we have closed our case, the Council for the County Assembly states it rightly. We will never have an opportunity, or even knowing what is the nature of those materials. This morning, this committee has not been told what are the materials that are intended to be introduced. What is the value of those materials to the case for the county assembly? And what will be the importance of those materials in controverting any defense that the governor may feel? This committee, just the same as the, lead, uh, the council for the governors, we do not know what materials we are being told is going to be introduced later. It is not even suggested by way of passing, even from the stand by the council, what kind of materials will be supplied. We object to the suggestion and the invitation to crawl in the darkness to agree to materials which you do not know uh, what they contain. The last uh, option, that in the course of cross examination, new evidence can be introduced. I have already stated that opportunity was available yesterday and they had all the documents and all that evidence that the governor is fielding today. They could have done that in the course of examination in chief and re-examination. They take through their witnesses through all our statements and affidavits and they allow them controvert. We cannot allow introduction of evidence at the defense hearing. And there will be, there will be, an, there will be a, a legal, the last point, there will be a legal dilemma. That evidence that will be introduced through cross-examination, will it be the testimony of the county assembly or the testimony of the council for the county assembly? That can be a dilemma that cannot be addressed in law and is unheard of. We object to those proposals. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you very much. Members, just take note. Uh, I want us to exhaust completely so that when you come in, we now it now invites me to make a ruling. Uh, Mr. Mthomi Thia Ngolu, what is your take? Chair, I think my colleague has forgotten a number of things. One, you already made the decision to allow us to respond to that material. That decision, I don't think, is being appealed or revisited. It has been made. The reason I made the request I made before you is that although you granted me that leave, it is evident to everyone who has either been here or following these proceedings that me and my entire team were stuck here all the way past midnight. And although on paper, the chair gave me the opportunity. It has not been humanly possible for me to take that opportunity. And I told you my fear is that whereas it is humanly impossible, I am afraid when your committee retreats, it will have in its mind that I was given an opportunity that I didn't take up. And yet the reason I didn't take it up was that it was humanly impossible within the circumstances and context we were working. Number two, listening to the eye moral ground taken by my colleague, he forgets. My colleague has forgotten how we got here. And if I remind the Senate how we got here, is that the governor filed documents out of time. The registry, the clerk's office advised the governor, you're filing these documents out of time, we cannot accept them. Go to the committee, seek leave to have these documents admitted on the record. And the committee gave him that leave. No one can fault the committee for that except that immediately he was given that leave and the documents were treated 
He tells you they were served on earth. What he hasn't told you on the record, which I told you yesterday, he not only filed them outside the time set by your rules, he actually purported to serve them way past 5 p.m. On, on the day after the expiry of his deadline. And I remember telling you, we saw those documents yesterday morning as we were packing our bundles. He tells you because I made certain passing comments on those documents, it is clear, therefore, I have had the opportunity to reflect on them. Chair, that is not how it works. In our profession, what I would do if we were in an ideal situation, and this is not ideal because of the timelines, is that my team and I will sit down, go through those documents with a tooth comb, flag what we believe are the issues, take instructions from our client, the county assembly, and based on our reflections and the instructions we get, we'll then be able to decide what response, what position do we take. Things I took on the bar here studying extempore cannot really be taken. My colleague knows that's not how the legal profession works. And at any rate, Chair, for me, if you assure me that this human impossibility my team and I are placed in will not be used against us, then there is not an issue. You've met your point. Uh, members, I want now to make a ruling. If any one of you would like to help us a little bit by sharing his thoughts, these things must be done in, op in the open. Yes. Uh, Chair, I thank you, and uh, I want to uh, just support what the Council for the County Assembly has said. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in my position, I, I don't think that the Council for the Governor has any standing to raise the objection that he raised. And I'm happy that Council for the Assembly has reminded him how we got here. I'm looking at my notes, Chair. The items that were introduced, they told us they omitted three affidavits from their own bundle. Then one video that forms part of the record was not uploaded or they gave the wrong flash disk. They are not in any position to raise the objection that they are raising. I do not see any prejudice that would be suffered by the governor if counsel for the county assembly was allowed to cross-examine on this material that we, we very graciously accepted ourselves as a committee. And you remember, Chair, the thinking was that in these proceedings we would like as much material as possible placed before this committee so that we can help save the situation in the county of Meru. So I think uh, from where I sit, uh, counsel for uh, the governor is out of order with that objection, Mr. Chair. Chairman. Chairman. Yes, very quickly, Chairman, uh, the position by the council of county, uh, the county assembly is the true position because that is the point at which we closed last night, and uh, that was already granted. It's not a new request that is being processed, but a request that has already been granted uh, uh, as it is, and uh, in the actual sense from um, the, the proceedings of yesterday, the favor was extended by the county assembly, uh, you know, legal team by not objecting, uh, objecting but allowing that to happen. And if they don't have time now, I think the cross-examination should be given the opportunity for them to uh, do what needs to be done. And that ruling happened yesterday. It's not a new ruling. Yes. Uh, Vice Chair, you will come after, after Senator Maruma. Sorry, Chair. Um, what I wanted to raise has been raised by um, Senator already, Ali, Roba, that um, the decision Maruma, for the... Maruma, if you give me two minutes, uh, just hold it here. Yes.
Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to state that um, what uh, Senator Ali has said is that uh, the decision was made yesterday that the counsel for the MCAs can respond to the affidavits and the extra video during the cross-examination. That's it. Yes, Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to confirm that, and I think that is where we stopped yesterday. Uh, by them being allowed to cross-examine the counsel for the uh, counter-assemblies of Meru, the new evidence, the new affidavit that uh, the governor's people brought in. So they should be allowed to cross-examine. And that you ruled yesterday, Chair. It's not... Kiambu. Uh, Thank you very much, Chair, and good morning. Um, I, I would just want to remind the council of the governor, of which the governor is a bishop, that in the Bible, book of Matthew, there was a servant who was forgiven his debts. But later on, he went uh, to, to get the money from another servant whom he owed. So what I'm trying to say is that yesterday we allowed um, the governor to produce extra we actually um, give them evidential flexibility. But now they don't want the side of the assembly to execute uh, that uh, uh, um, uh, evidence. But my question is, at what time do we allow the assembly to execute uh, that evidence? Is it before the governor starts executing uh, their case? Or is it within? I know they are asking when it's coming to cross-examination. So I, I have not consulted my friend lawyer here, Sifuna, but I'm putting this across so that we see what is the best part. Either we agree with the assembly, they start with their case now, or uh, whatever you decide, Chairman. That is it. Mandago, you have something? Uh, thank you very much, Chair. This is Senator Mandako for Washington. and my apologies, I was not able to be here yesterday, but I followed the proceedings very keenly. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, listening to the counsel for the governor, um, I really don't understand why, if they are confident themselves when they submitted this additional evidence as to why the county assembly counsel cannot prosecute the same. So I think in the interest of fairness, because we, we want to have as much information as possible as a committee to enable us to make a fair and just decision, as a chairman, I think it's only fair that the county assembly council is given an opportunity to look at the, um, to, to cross-examine this new evidence. Thank you. Uh, Senator Tobiko. Chair, I think maybe, you know, what is clear, of course, that it was already allowed yesterday for to be done at cross-examination. But I think what the uh, counsel for the county assembly is asking is if they can uh, put in written uh, responses later on. I think that, that that's the issue now. So, uh, this is a small one. We don't have to retreat uh, to make a decision. The decision is here by med. Uh, Council for the County Assembly, you have absolutely no excuse to want to give the impression that there is something which is humanly, using your own language, humanly impossible. We have had a lot of time we adjourned at a quarter to one. That is five and a half hours for you to sleep. Then if you woke up at six, you have had all the morning up to now, which is 10. So you have all the time. The issue of time does not arise. The second point is to the council for the governor. As the white people who taught us this procedure say 
What is good for the goose is always good for the gander. So if it was good for the goose called the governor to be allowed to file that evidence yesterday, that which you should have filed by 5 p.m. on 25th on Saturday. Yes? 24th. On, on 24th. By 5 p.m. 24th on Saturday. If it was good for you. Then you must carry it with you that it was also good for the Ganda to also enjoy what we allowed the county assembly to enjoy. But when we allowed the county assembly, we did not give them a blanket. We asked them to make a decision on how they want to be accommodated. And they have said, Council, that all they will do is not to try and file new evidence. Even if they did, it would not be admissible. They're just saying, as you prosecute your case, they will come and cross-examine your witnesses, and during that process, they'll be able to achieve that which they thought they were losing. So we are granting them that for every witness you bring, they'll cross-examine, and you don't have to fear because even after cross-examination, you will be given an opportunity to re-examine. And if there are any areas that look rough, you'll brush them off and everybody will be happy. That will be the ruling. And uh, seeing that there's no other interjection, there's one final thing which I didn't do. I'm sorry. Chair, Chair, kindly. Chair. What is that? I'm by you, sir. Oh. Honorable Chair, this is not on the submissions. Mr. Speaker, order, order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you will be seated. You will be seated. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, order. So there is also something procedural which I had not done. Uh, forgive me for this. Uh, immediately after uh, prayer, I want to allow honorable members, one by one, members of the committee, you introduce yourself, starting with my file. Good morning again. My name is Paris Tobiko, nominated senator and a member of the select committee. Thank you. Good morning all. My name is Jones Maruma, senator for Taita Taveta, member of this committee. Good morning everyone once again. My name is Edwin Sifuna, senator for Nairobi and a member of this committee. My name is Karunga Wadangwa, senator, Kiambu County and a member of this committee. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Eddie Gisheru Okech, Senator for Migori County, and I'm able to be a member of this committee. My name is Jackson Mandago, the Senator for Singishu County, and the member of this committee. Uh, good morning. My name is Okenyuri Esther, nominated Senator and a member of this committee. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joseph Iduku, Senator for Lamu. And a member of this committee. I'm sorry. Morning, everyone. My name is Ali Ibrahim Roba, Senator for Mandera County and member of this committee. Good morning, everyone. My name is Senator Kavindu Agnes Mudama, uh, Senator for Machakos County. I'm the vice chair of this committee. Thank you very much. Uh, also, in plenary, we have the following members of the National Assembly and distinguished senators. The Honorable Mburi Apuri, Member of Parliament from Meru. The Honorable uh, Senator Gerardo Gay, Senator of Nandi. Senator of Nandi, could you please? They want to know who it is. May I know who you are? Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. The Honorable Senator Medu. Thank you, Medu. 
uh, the youngest senator in Kenya, the Honorable Senator Omtata. Thank you. Uh, the Honorable, Se sorry, Umtata Senator for Busia. The Honorable Senator Wamatinga, the Senator of Nyeri. And finally, but not least, I will invite our Deputy Speaker, who is also the Senator of Meru, to not only introduce himself, but to make a remark. And the remark by the Speaker uh, it's not for record. It's off the record. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I am Kaduri Murungi, the Senator for Meru County, and the Deputy Speaker of the Senate. Uh, I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ. As uh, Chair, uh, yesterday, I requested uh, whether you could supply me with the documents or materials as the senator for Meru County, which is which has uh, the issue at hand, so that I can be able to follow the proceedings. And you promised to do that today because yesterday you told me the secretary and not compiled all the documents. Honorable Chair, you remember yesterday I sat here throughout the day. But I was just a pedestrian, like those watching from their homes or from the streets. So since I'm here not uh, supporting any of the signs, but I'm here as a senator for Meru and representing the good county of Meru County, of Meru. So I'm here as a neutral person, just to listen to the proceedings. Because even after the outcome of whatever outcome, from this uh, sitting of this committee, we have a county to protect, called Meru. We shall only treat as a senator to go back to Meru, and we have a county to live in, because we can't move away from Meru. So, Honorable Chair, I request if it is humanly possible, let me use the word from uh, our learned friend, Dr. Diankoru Mudomi, if it is humanly possible, can you kindly supply me the documents so that also I, I, I'll be able to follow the proceedings. Last night, Honorable Chair, as I finish, conclude, many constituents, my constituents from Meru County, were calling me to ask me, our Senator, was that document written? Did you see it? Was it the right one? How was it? I could not even tell, was it blue, was it yellow, was it red? So, Chair, so that I can be able to, to really represent my people who brought me to this house, kindly allow the Secretary to provide me with the documents so that I can also be able to follow the proceedings on both sides. I want also, I wish this is on record that I'm here not to support any of the signs, but we are the issues brought to this house, Honorable House, and by the County Assembly of Meru and the issues which are being also presented here by the county government of Meru. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Deputy Speaker, you know how much we respect you. And uh, because you always sit in this seat where I'm seated, you know the challenges that come with it. Uh, any decision made by myself is the decision of this committee drawing it is mounted from the rest of the Senate. We took a decision yesterday that we will not release documents, and for good reason. We did not want to disadvantage the governor. The governor's evidence was not yet public. In law, Article 35 of the Constitution, that gives all of us the right of access to information, we can only enjoy it from now. Because now, the documents by the governor are being made public. We did not want to disadvantage her case. So I therefore direct to you, the Deputy Speaker, Senator Gerard Gay, who had the same complaint yesterday and others, 
that you will now be supplied with copies. I'm confident that the governor will not have been disadvantaged. It is so directed. I now want to invite the Yes, Governor, I'm informed that you are ready. Uh, could the lead counsel for the Governor? Yes. The consultation from the Senator of Migori, he approached the chair, and I'm now allowing him to report to repeat the same thing, so that the record captures his concerns as I give a ruling. Yes, Senator of Migori. Uh, chair, I, I just seek to the understanding of uh, this committee uh, and. Uh, uh, standing order number 80 of the Senate. Uh, it's a procedural question which is uh, on the removal of the governor and if you go through our standing orders number 80 this house is advised by the standing orders that you either go the special committee way or you go the committee of the hall and this special committee is sitting after the house had chosen that the special committee handles this matter by allowing other senators to participate in the process whether directly or indirectly by interacting with these documents which to be fair will be subjected to a report that will be referred to the, to the committee of the whole. Are we defying our own disunderstanding orders? Edwin Safuna, do we really want to belabor it? No, Chair, I think you've uh, made the right decision. Uh, our colleague from Meru, sitting here, following the proceedings, there's absolutely no prejudice to the process if when counsel for the governor is referring the committee to a document, he also has a document to look at it. He's not, that is not a participation. He's not going to ask any questions. He just wants to follow the proceedings so that those questions that he's saying the people of Meru are asking him, at least he'll know the color of the documents that the governor supplied today. Thank you. Uh, Senator Migori, uh, distinguished gentleman, okay. Uh, unfortunately, standing order number eight, eh, flows from the Constitution of Kenya. The same Constitution that provides in Article 35 the right of access to information. So because we have no power to suspend Article 35, the members who are here must enjoy that article. However, as they enjoy the article, it should not be to the detriment of this process and also the right of the governor. So the, the way to go, uh, Senator, is that now that the governor is reducing the documents in public, they are therefore public documents. There's nothing that stops you from accessing them, plus the people of Meru through their senator. Uh, secondly, having access to them, we also have to do a bit of hygienic management of the process in the sense that A, senators, you will not be allowed to participate in the proceedings. The moment we do that, 
we will have opened parallel proceedings, one which is by the select committee and one which is by the committee of the whole, where all of you would be participating. So you'll only go through, but forever keep quiet. And then finally, as you leave, we have agreed that all these documents are very sensitive. They remain on the desk. So do not carry documents with you. It is so directed. Well, well guided, Chair. Yes. And Chair, I want to confirm to you and the committee that uh, we will not, I will not participate in questioning and I will not leave this seat with any document. Just for consumption while I'm sitting here. Thank you. Chair. And, and I encourage the Senator of Meru to stay in up to the end because we want the people of Meru to be satisfied that the process is actually above board. I can see my distinguished senator from Nandi, my neighbor. He's uh, dying to, to catch my attention uh, with standing order. Yes, I have seen you, but I will not allow you. The moment you prosecute your standing order, you are participating in the proceedings, unfortunately. Sure. Thank you. And some of the documents will be on the iPad shortly. Uh, members of the Senate, you know the other way. You can easily have your matters raised by communicating with the senators who are on the committee. If you have something you say, what do you think? You can write a small chart. It goes there so long as you don't disrupt the sittings. Very well. So, uh, Senator Mandako. Uh, yes, Chair. I thank you very much for that guidance, Chair. We appreciate But I think the Senator for Meru, from what he said, he, he said the people of Meru are asking him the colors of the documents. So I think, Chair, it should also be clear that it is not in his mandate to go and discuss the matters of this committee with the people of Meru. He leaves the matters to the committee. So it is for his consumption within this sitting, Chair. I think that goes with uh, the earlier ruling and it is so directed. Very well. So, Council, how many witnesses are you calling? Thank you, Chairman. Manassas Mwangi, Council for the Governor, with Arias Mutuma and Robert Mutembei. Honorable Chairman, the governor, the governor filed a response to this charge. The response is the one uh, dated uh, the one dated the 23rd of December 2022 and filed on 24th December. It's accompanied by the supporting affidavit of Her Excellency the Governor Kawera Mwangaza soon on 23rd December 2022. The governor have also filed a supplementary affidavit. That supplementary affidavit was sworn by Harrison Katobu Getonga on the 26th, on the 23rd, on the 26th of December 2022. We also rely on the battle of documents supplied to this honorable committee as volume two of the governor's bundles. At this juncture, we will field one witness, Mr. Harrison Gatobu Getonga, and uh, we'll see how far we go with the Harrison Gatobu Getonga. We intend to redeem the time for this committee, and we believe this witness will address all the issues. But uh, should occasion arise, we'll uh, rearrange but uh, for now, we'll call this one witness to testify on the basis of the documents filed before this committee. Very well. This is a very important procedural issue. The governor was invited by the County of Assembly of Meru. She declined when the process was building to come here. 
So I want it to be on record. Do you wish to call the governor before this committee or not? Honorable Chairman, the governor indicated in the response will appear by herself and by council. And uh, we have filed an affidavit in the gov uh, sworn by the governor. We will have the governor rely on the answer to the response to the motion and the supporting affidavit. For the record, would, will you be requesting or expecting that the governor be given an opportunity to be heard by this committee? We do not intend the governor to testify verbally. She will rely on her affidavit. Thank you very much. I want you to know that as you proceed, if at any time you would wish the governor to be heard, we will hear her. We do not want it to be your position that she was gagged by this committee. Most of blight, honorable you're, you're chair. Welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, you may proceed. For the team for the governor, Mr. Arias Mutuma will lead our witness in chief. You're welcome. I, Arison Gatobu Gitonga, do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before this committee in respect of the uh, matters before this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, for the opportunity. For the record, my name is Elias Mutuma, Council appearing on instructions of the Governor. Uh, Mr. Harrison, kindly, again for the record, state your full names. Uh, my names are Harrison Atobu Gitonga. Do you also go by any other names? Yes. What other names do you go by? Uh, Njamba Mbidi Harrison Getonga. Would you care to explain the origin and status of your second name? Uh, it was a nickname, but I saw an affidavit and it was gazetted on, 20, on 2nd of December. So you're in the process of changing your name? Yes. So is it your testimony that in some instances you might have signed certain documents using your new name that is that has already been gazetted yes thank you very much uh, what role do you play in the county government of Meru um, the chief of staff and the private secretary to the governor of Meru County and what are your roles as the chief of staff what are your functions? Kindly state them for the record. Uh, management of a uh, hand diary and overseeing all functions and activities uh, in the office of the governor as well as receiving all respondences from all quarters to the office of the governor. Is that all? Uh, managing the staff that is uh, in the office of the governor and communicating from the office of the governor to the other quarters. 
Chair, you, with your permission, may I get directions on uh, time? I, I did not get the directions. Thank you. Ask for time. How much time do you want? Two hours, Chair. I, I recall that we have a total of three and a half hours for both examination in chief and uh, the cross examination. So we, I can have two hours now. Council for the respondent can have a bit of it, then some remainder of it goes to re examination. Chair, you, Chair. You, you want the council for the county assembly to have part of your two hours or what do you mean? No, no. Yeah. That is just purely for my examination in chief. Okay. Yes. Chair, Chair, though I know I might not even need the entire time. Chairman, with your permission, uh, Wakili, I presume that we are going to be relying on this witness statement that is volume three? Co correct, and the affidavit that he has won. Where is the affidavit? We filed that affidavit uh, yesterday. Yeah, we have advised you from yesterday that if you want us to follow your case, whenever you are uh, bringing your witness there, you refer us to the documents that you will be relying. Uh, Council, I raise this because I only have the witness statement, and that witness statement has eight paragraphs. You want to tell us you will be taking us through eight paragraphs in two hours? Uh, not really. There is an affidavit sworn by the witness on 26th of December 2022. The same was fired yesterday, passed on to the leave okay. granted by this committee. Perhaps the Secretariat can share. Okay. The same with the... Uh, okay, Chair. Thank you. Chair. Uh, thank you. Yes, yes. Is there somebody going? Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Manda, go. Uh, Chair, the document the council is referring to, I want to presume is the one that is unmarked, so the document should be marked for ease of referencing. It, uh, my apologies again. We were preparing this document while we were still proceeding with this hearing yesterday. That ought to be uh, volume four. Because we have volume one, two, three, and four. So for the record, that ought to be referred as volume four. Chair, there are two supplementary documents. Which one is volume? There are two. The bigger one. Okay, okay, okay. This is a management issue. It will not stop us from proceeding. I want to ask one of your councils to approach the chair so that we guide them on how to manage these documents as you proceed. Uh, Council for the County Assembly, you, you have heard you are being asked to take some time. Yes, today we are very strict with time, yeah. Chair, we will need one and a half hours minimum if this is the sole witness, because my assumption is if he is the sole witness, then he is the one that will speak to every allegation in the impeachment motion and every claim made by the governor in response to that impeachment motion. So we pray that you give us 90 minutes of cross-examination. Very good. This special committee of the Senate will not gag anybody. We therefore give you 120 minutes, two hours, and the county assembly, you have 90 minutes plus an extra 10 minutes should you need it. Governor, you Thank have you. been in office for that long, but just 64 days after being in office, your colleagues who are elected by you, I mean alongside with you, are asking the Senate that you go away forever, just after 64 days. And they have not just come shouting, they have come with 62 grounds. I'm therefore giving you two hours to move slowly, meticulously, 
you discharge yourself on each and every one of those 62 counts. We will allow you. And members of county assembly will further allow you to ensure that you prove your case on every count. Witness. Chair. 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 Just to assist colleagues, uh, uh, I think that we have the document just that uh, uh, for, for the purpose of, uh, of colleagues in the committee, volume three is of course well, uh, uh, well marked, but then uh, there is an affidavit which is not marked, but it is there. So just check on your files, yeah. you'll have it. Uh, that is exactly why I asked them to approach the, the, the chair. Already an instruction has been given uh, so that they are marked quietly as the sitting is going on. And members, unless something is out of order, if we can manage to be silent for two hours, it will be very useful. But if something is out of order, draw my attention, we'll do it. If it is something that is not out of order, approach the chair, we sort it out, Kienyeji, as they say in Kiswahili. Yes, proceed. Thank you, Chair, for the guidance. Uh, Mr. Harrison Katobu, Yes. You were explaining your other duties, especially you're your wearing the hat of the private secretary to the governor. What other duties do you discharge? Uh, the other duties, I always, uh, I'm always the MC of the functions that the governor attends. By the MC, you mean master of ceremony? Yes. Proceed. Uh, I'm also present in the meeting, uh, meetings that are held by governor, either in office or in the public, or outside the office. Does that include all the meetings where the governor is appearing? Your presence will also be there? Yes. So then you have a personal knowledge of all the incidences that the governor is accused of? Yes. Am I right to suggest that you have a close working relationship with the governor? Yes. Have you had the occasion to read the notice of motion for impeachment of the governor? Yes. Both at the county assembly and before this select committee? Yes. Are you aware of all the charges facing the governor? Yes. How many are they in number? Uh, 62. 62 charges in total. The charges were five, but the uh, sub uh, the small ones, the specific ones, 62. 62 of them. Have you had an opportunity to read the governor's response on each of those charges? Yes. You will agree with me that the bulk of the allegations and charges are in respect of illegal appointments, nepotism, and so on. Yes. As the person in charge of staff, does it concern you when the governor is accused of illegal appointments? Is that within your docket? Yes, it is. It is within your docket. Yes. So when you came across the accusations touching on illegal appointments and nepotism. Did you take any action as the chief of staff? Yes. What action did you take specifically in respect to the allegation of the first gentleman of Meru being appointed to a county office? What step did you take? Uh, first, I confirmed uh, there is no uh, uh, a public office that uh, he was appointed to and to do that there is no office either in my office or office of the governor or anyone under that capacity uh, in the team that I read in the office of the governor. So it is your evidence that the first gentleman is not one of the staff he that is not. works for the county assembly under you? He is not. Has there been any office, physical office, 
where the first gentleman of Meru has been given a space to operate in? No. By the governor of Meru? No. Have you come across any letter of appointment touching on the appointment of the first gentleman? No. Has the first gentleman given any instructions that you are aware of in respect of any functions within the county? No. Did you ever seek to clarify the issue of the appointment of the first gentleman with any office, specifically the office of the pub, county public service board? Yes. Can you kindly give this committee the benefit of that evidence where you sought that clarification? Is there any document to support that assertion? Yes. They are attached in the reply from the governor. And by this, you're talking of volume two? Yes. What page are we talking about? Honorable members, I'm referring to volume two of the governor's response. Specifically, page 48 to 77 of that bundle, kindly point to the committee where your letter or any communication to the County Public Service Board touching on the appointment of the first gentleman appears. Uh, thank you, Chair, Honorable Members. Uh, when I got this information, I wrote the first letter to the Secretary Public Service Board what is the date of that letter? 22nd of November. What did you inquire from the County Public Service Board? I was uh, uh, requesting to know about the arranged appointment of the first gentleman and a few other people that I listed in my letter. Did you get a response from the County Public Service Board? Yes. Where but I need to say the same letter was copied to other offices. Thank you. Uh, can you indicate whether you got a response from the Office of the County Public Service Board? Yes, I got a letter. And what was the date of that response? 23rd of November. 23rd of November. Yes. And what was the response that is contained in that letter? Uh, the response were from the Public Service uh, Board is that uh, the first gentleman was not employed by the Public Service Board. Thank you very much. Did you take any other step to confirm whether the first gentleman is drawing any remuneration of any kind from the county government of Meru? Yes. And how did you do that confirmation? I indeed a letter to the payroll manager. Yes. Where is that letter in your bundle of documents still at volume two? Yes. What page is it? Is page page fifty four? Fifty four of a bundle. Is that is that your letter? Are you sure? That is the response that I got. Yes, and what was the response from the payroll master? Is uh, that they are not in the payroll. Then he is not in the payroll. Yes, he is not in the payroll. Thank you. But we have seen the governor making statements to the effect that he has appointed the first gentleman. First of all, were you present when that announcement was made? Yes. What was the occasion when that pronouncement was made? And if you also recall the date kindly, tell us the date of that pronouncement. Uh, it was uh, that year of uh, October. Which year? Uh, 2022. What was the occasion? Uh, that is the time that the uh, governor was naming the CECs. The CECs, were there any other offices? that were being named on that day, apart from CECs? Yes. What other offices were being named? The advisors to the governor. The advisors to governor? Yes.
is that the occasion where the first gentleman was pronounced to be appointed by the governor? Yes. In what office was the first gentleman appointed by the governor? Uh, the ambassador, the ambassadors of the Asuras, Asuras ambassador. Asuras ambassador. Yes. Is that an office within the Meru County government? No. Is, is it an office that has been established newly by the County Public Service Board? No. Then what was that office all about? Uh, it was just a uh, honorary office. Actually, to add uh, something small, I experienced the, gov uh, the governor was operating another program called Okorea. And uh, because uh, of our duties as the governor, he decided to have someone who has been close uh, to that program that she has been doing for quite some time, who will not be paid and who will work with her on that program. That's when the first gentleman was named as the Asola's ambassador. So is it your evidence that this was a community empowerment initiative? Yes. Is it unique for first ladies or first gentlemen of any of the counties or even the national government to spearhead or to be appointed in a community empowerment program of their choice? Is not unique. Are you aware if any of the other first ladies of Meru have ever been involved in similar initiatives? Yes, I'm aware. You're aware. At this point, uh, Chair and Committee, allow us play a video contained in our flash disk. The same is marked as KMS6B. As the video is being prepared, let us see where the transcription is. The council can show us where the transcription is. The, the, the video is in English, uh, honorable member, so there is no need for translation. Thank you. We are very, very happy today. We have come here to launch the Meru Toesa program, which consists of the following women. The first one is Priscilla Murungi. She's not here with us, she's the first lady. She's going to be the patron of this group. The second one is just been by. The board will be supported by a strong secretariat from the Ministry of Gender and Social Development. Uh, the minister is going to identify some of the officers who will be working with you uh, in that board. And the, the board will be funded by part of the budget which is allocated to the Ministry of um, Ministry of Education, Technology, Culture and Gender and Social Development to enable you to move to all the corners of this county. Thank you very much. I am sure most of the members of this select committee are aware of the person talking, but for the record, kindly tell us who is in that video and what is what has he done uh is the former governor meru county his excellency kiraito murongi well he was appointing the first lady priscilla murongi to a position of uh patron to a weather program in Meru County. In your understanding, is the office for which the first lady was being appointed a public office under the county government? It is not. It is not. It is that office, was it ever funded by taxpayers' money? Yes. It was? It was funded. Has that been confirmed from the video by the governor himself that they will draw their support from the Ministry of is it Education? Yes. Thank you. 
uh, was that appointment subsequently forwarded to the county assembly for vetting? No. Are you aware if any of the members of that board were ever vetted by the county assembly? I'm not aware. Are you aware of any complaints, proceedings, or even an attempt to impeach the then governor of Meru for appointing a spouse to that office? I'm not aware. You're not aware. Was that appointment ever published to the public subsequently? Yes, it was. I also saw the Gazette notice of the same. So in that Gazette notice, the governor is appointing the spouse. Yes. Thank you very much. Across the other counties, have you also come across similar initiatives by either first ladies or first gentlemen? Yes. Spearheading community empowerment programs of their choice? Yes. Can you give an instance of such initiatives? that you are aware of? And have you brought any evidence? Rather, has any evidence of that nature been brought to this committee? Yes. Where is that evidence contained? Uh, evidence from page 31. All the way to page? All the way to page number 40. Number 40. Yes. Thank you very much. I am sure you've also come across the accusation that the governor has appointed certain people who either do not qualify or without following procedure into public office. Yes, I'm aware. Who were those people that are said to have been appointed by the governor? There is one Monene Samaritan. One Monene Samaritan. There is one Enere Muzungu. Enere Muzungu. And there is one Ernest Mutembe. Again, as the chief of staff, are those employees of the county? No, they are not. Did you ever seek to confirm their status, the employment status with the county? Yes, I did. Can you show this committee where you sought to establish their status? Uh, I wrote uh, letters to the Public Service Board. I wrote, that is uh, in page number 49. I wrote the letter to the chief uh, officer, legal affairs and the public service and administration, and to the payroll. All those letters are appearing following each other from uh, page 49 onwards. Yes. And what was the response from the county public service board? They all responded with the attached letters that those are not employees of the county government of Meru and they are not earning any money or any pay from county government or mail. That letter is the one contained at page 52 of our bundle, volume 2? Yes. And who is, who is the author of that letter? The author is uh, the CEO of the Public Service Board by the name Virginia Kagueria. Yesterday, this letter was disputed during cross-examination that indeed Virginia Kawera is not the CEO County Public Service Board. What comment do you have to make to that respect? Uh, my comment is uh, when we get to the office, we got uh, the person that was the County Secretary uh, uh, CEO of uh, 
Public Service Board, her term was ending. She didn't allow two months, and then thereafter, there is a, an acting CEO, but uh, on the same strength, the position has been advertised. That position has been advertised? Yes. So Virginia is currently acting? Yes. Pending a substantial uh, office holder? Yes. Substantive rather, office holder? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any evidence of that advertisement? Yes. Where is it contained? As you try to trace it, we will assist you, but uh, let's proceed for the sake of time. So you confirm that indeed Virginia had the capacity to author that letter? Yes. Did you also take any steps to confirm if any of those alleged appointees draw any form of remuneration from the county government of Meru? Yes, I did. How did you do that? By a letter to the payroll manager. What is the date of the letter and where is it contained? Is it the one under page 53? 53? Yes. Is it 53 or 54? It is uh, page 54. Page 54? Yes. So that is your communication to the payroll master? Yes. And what did the payroll master respond to? Actually, that, that is what the response. Yes. That was our response. The payroll master responded by that letter that is uh, in page 54. My letter was copied actually to, to him by the chief officer legal affairs. Thank you. So you have a response under page 54 confirming that indeed none of those appointees draw any form of remuneration from the Meru County government. Yes. Are you also aware if the purported nominees have volunteered to tender any form of evidence in respect to their appoint appointment before this select committee? Yes, they did. They did. Is that in the form of the affidavits they have filed before this committee? Yes. Thank you. Let's go to the appointment of one Hillary Sunday confirm that that is a person working for the county government of Meru? Yes, he is working. He is working? Yes. When was he appointed and how was he appointed? Uh, he was appointed on 30th of August 2022. In what position? The Director of Communications. The Director of Communications? Yes. Before we proceed further, Yesterday there was a confusion as to whether his position has now subsequently been advertised. Is that the case? No. Which position has been advertised? Uh, the communications officer that are outside the office of the governor. The communications officer? Yes. Is that one and the same office where Hillary Sunday currently occupies? No, it's a different office. Is it true that, in fact, Hillary Sunday would be the overseer of the, di the, the person, the officer who is being uh, sought to be recruited? Yes. Thank you. Uh, so you were telling us that, indeed, Hillary Sunday was appointed. Yes, he was appointed. Yes. Yeah. How was he appointed? Uh, what was the criteria and procedure for his appointment? The criteria was uh, as directed by a circular that uh, governor was given from intergovernmental technical committee on how to fill the staff that are in office of the governor. 
That is the chief of staff, uh, the cooks, the drivers, the secretary, the personal assistants, all those. Eh? And uh, the directives were very clear. The governor identifies the name, forms that name to the public service board for confirmation of appointment. And what governor did, uh, through myself, did a letter to the public service board finding the name of Ira Sunday, and it was confirmed. You said that uh, that request to the county public service board was done through your office? Yes. Where is that request found in the bundle of documents? As you try to trace it, did you, before we go to the appointment, the advisory you're talking about, is it the one contained at page 79 of our bundle, the letter dated 16th August 2022? Yes, that is the advisory that uh, we received. That is the advisory. Yeah. Let's dwell a bit on that advisory before we proceed. Which are some of the offices that the governor is allowed to undertake a direct appointment without a competitive process? Uh, these are the chief of staff stroke the private secretary. That is yourself. That's myself. The economic advisor, the political advisor, the legal advisor, the director of governor's less service or director of communication. That is the position. That is the position that okay. is owned by Ira Sandy. Proceed. The personal assistance and the support staff. The support staff includes the personal secretaries, the drivers, the cooks, the gardeners, and the messengers. So according to that advisory, is there any requirement that those appointments will be forwarded to the county assembly for vetting or approval? No requirement. Is there any requirement that those positions will be advertised for a competitive recruitment? No requirement. So uh, did you ever get a response from the office of the county public service board on the approvals of the names forwarded? Yes, I got. Is that the letter contained at page 90 of our bundle of documents? Yes, it is. Can you identify the name of Hillary Sunday? On that list? Yes, is number one. Mutuma Irari Mugambi, ID number 3141-5419, Director of Communications, Job Group, CPSB03. For what period were these persons, including Hillary, appointed in office? Five years contract. Five years contract. So when the governor forwards their nominees to the county public service board, is it the county public service board that now takes over those employees and uh, recruits them or rather issues uh, letters of appointment? Yes, they are the ones that interviews and confirms to the governor that they qualify. So indeed, there is an interview conducted by the county public service board. Yes. So the issue of qualification or suitability of those nominees would be an issue within the mandate of the County Public Service Board? Yes. Maybe something I've noted from that letter is that the name Sunday does not appear. Would you kindly explain whether we are talking about one and the same person? Uh, is one person 
The official name is Motuma Irale Mogambi. Nickname Sandy. Thank you. Let's go to the issue of roadside recruitments. And I want to draw you to some incidences. One at Kobo Market. One, were you present at Nkobo Market when that purported roadside appointment was done? Yes, I was. What day was it? Can you remember the date? If you don't remember, it's still I don't remember the date. You don't remember the date. Yeah. So what was the occasion? Uh, the occasion is when governor visited the market traders with the area MCA, Honorable Martin Kome Makasi, and uh, they went to the open air market where they were talking with the market traders. During that uh, market, uh, due to that meeting, there were some requests from the MCA, and that is what the governor addressed. So, so it is your evidence that the Honorable MCA for that area invited the governor to address certain challenges they were facing. Yes. What is the name of that MCA for the record once again? Is Martin Kome Makasi MCA Nkwene Wand. Martin Kome Makasi. Yes. In the impeachment motion, as Martin Makasi signed in support of the impeachment motion based he, on the allegation that the governor undertook roadside recruitment as Kobo Market. Yes, he has signed. He has signed that uh, motion in support. Honorable members and chair, kindly, can we look at... Uh, our next year, KM, KM, KMS14E, it's a video in our flash disk. The translation, because most of the happenings are in Kimeru, is contained at page 98 of our bundle, volume two. Is that the area MCA? Yes, yes. We, we can even pause there for the sake of time. Thank you. You will realize, honorable members and chair, that that video, same video, was played yesterday, but it was not played in full. They began where the governor was calling the public to offer people to be recruited as watchmen. So can you tell us, at the beginning, what is happening? Uh, what is happening uh, in that meeting, the members of the open air market uh, and discussed an issue regarding the security of the items that they leave at the market and in the deliberations it came out clear that uh, they were supposed to do uh, the arambi that is they changa themselves so that they can employ an watchman because there is no position or there is no employment of a, uh, the watchman to guard the open air markets as per Meru County uh, employment. Before you proceed, what is the specific request from the member of 
county assembly of that ward? What is the specific request to the governor? To employ, to assist the, uh, to lend us, employ uh, the watchman and also build the fence. So it is the governor reacting to that request that he assi she assist in uh, organizing the market and offering security? Yes. To your best of your knowledge, was anyone from that crowd, including Murefu, ever appointed no. by the county government of Meru? No. Did you make that follow-up? Yes, I did. And what was the confirmation? I indeed a letter to the public service board. I also did a letter to the payroll. And the confirmation was that they are not employees of county of government or mail and they are not earning any salary or pay from county government or mail. Are you referring to the letter that is contained at page 94 of our bundle of documents, volume 2? Yes, that's the letter. And did you get any response in respect to the same? Yes, I got. The letter, the one appearing next at page 95? Yes. And what was the response? They are not employees of the county government of Meru. Did you also confirm whether they are in the payroll of Meru county government? Yes, I did. The, the letter contained in page number 96 was the respond. Thank you. The governor has also been accused of directing the sub-county admin to employ. Have you seen any document Have you seen the affidavit of Samuel Mwenda? Yes. What does that affidavit speak of? Uh, Samuel Mwenda. I'm referring to now our volume four. Who is Samuel Mwenda? Is the subcounty administrator Gwene Mitungu subcounty? Yes. So you know him. Yes, I do. I will not question you on the averments of his affidavit because obviously you would have no knowledge of the same. But you confirm that indeed he is the sub county ward and mean. Yes, yes. Thank you. Let us move to the other roadside appointment at uh, Timau. Yes. Of firefighters. Yes. Again, were you present at that event? Yes, I was present. Can you remember the date? If you can't remember, it's still okay. It was on 22nd of September. 22nd of September? Yes. And you were present in that event? Yes, I was. To your best of your knowledge, did the governor recruit any firefighters? No, she did not. What did she do? She just recruited some people, uh, four people, that uh, are going to work or that are working and uh, our Korea program. And our Korea program. Yes. So it was not an appointment to the any county office. It was not. Did you ever follow up as the chief of staff on whether the governor had forwarded any names of firefighters to the county public service board or any other county office? Yes, I followed. Is your letter the one contained at page 93 of our bundle? Yes, it is the one. Did you get a response of that letter? Yes, I got a response from the Public Service Board 
that is contained in number page 94. And what does the letter say? They are not employees of county government of Meru. Thank I got you. another one from the uh, chief officer, uh, legal affairs, public service, administration and management. That is in page 95. Again, indicating they are not employees of county government of Melu. I got another one from the fire service in charge of Meru County, contained in page 97, again indicating they are not employees or they are not among the firefighters in Meru. Thank you. Let us move to the other roadside equipment at Kianjai. Yes. Again, were you present during that rally or meeting? Yes, I was. Can you remember the date? Uh, it is 11th of uh, November 2022. Though I know, uh, uh, erroneously, when I looked at the, uh, the motion, the date was indicated as being on a certain date in September. I don't remember. But the actual date was 11th of November 2022. What transpired at Kianjai? Uh, when we had a meeting at Kianjai, the public clearly, there was a request from the public about uh, the, uh, the garbage that was in that area and also about the security of uh, the open air market uh, in that area, the traders and that request. And uh, what governor did, because the garbage was so huge at that area, he decided to talk to the sub county administrator to ensure that uh, that one is done. And uh, he requested if he can have someone doing it from the community. Thank you. So again, was any name forwarded to the uh, County Public Service Board? No. To recruit anyone uh, from Kenjai? No. Thank you. Uh, let us move on to the issue of uh, the Municipality Board of Meru. Yes. Again, were you present at that meeting? Yes, I was. You were? Yes. What transpired on that date? And which date was it? I don't remember the exact date, but uh, what happened, there were some commotions within Meru Town, whereby we had uh, three groups of taxis, uh, taxi drivers or taxi operators that had is in, uh, some issues with one another. And uh, they approached the uh, governor to solve the problem. Governor called a meeting at the Kinoru Stadium for the dream groups and in the meeting they agreed to form a small committee that uh, oversee implementation of what was discussed in that meeting. Is we that small committee you're referring to, was it rather co-opted? in the municip municipality board? Was it uh, uh, told to usurp the role of the municipality board? Or what were the terms and reference of that committee created? Uh, the committee was from within the members of the tax, uh, taxi drivers or operators, and their mandate was only to solve their internal problems. Thank you. Have you come across the affidavit by Edward Bundy Joffrey. Yes, I have.
Do you know Edward Bundy Geoffrey? Yes, I know him. Who is he? He is one of the tax operators in Meru County. Was he present at that meeting? Yes. I will again not ask you any questions on that affidavit because obviously you would have no personal knowledge of the same. Uh, has the municipality board in any way talked about this issue? Yes, they have. They have? Yes. What have they said about this issue? Uh, the board and a meeting that was held on 16th of December 2022 when they had this issue of impeachment that was relating to uh, their role or the activities of municipal bond. And after the meeting, they indeed a letter to that effect. That letter of the municipal bond is contained in page number one or two. What is contained in that letter? Is the letter from the chairman affirming that uh, they have been uh, implementing their mandate as they were given. There was no parallel uh, committee and there are no issues with the governor or any other person as pertains to their mandate as the municipal board. Confirm again the page where that letter appears. Is it uh, page one or two? Yes, it is. Or volume two? Yes. Thank you. Let us move on to something else. The governor has been accused of forcefully entering into the compound of the Meru County Assembly on 19th. Is it 19th? Yes. Of October 2022. Yes. Were you present on that date when the governor went to the county assembly of Meru? Yes, I was. You were. So you have a first-hand experience. Yes. And account of what transpired. Yes. Why had the governor gone to the county assembly of Meru as the person in charge of her diary? Why had she gone there? Uh, she had gone there to give a first address to the county government, uh, to the county assembly of Meru and the mayor community. Was she get crashing or she had any formal invitation of the same? There was a formal invitation that was followed by a gazette notice of the same sitting of the county assembly of mayor. Yes, and uh, so have you, or rather has that gazette notice been produced before this court? Before yes. This committee? So as we get the Gazette notice, so this was a date that has been gazetted for the governor to address the Meru County Assembly. Yes. Is that the Gazette notice appearing at page 155 of volume two? Is it yes, one? is the one. Gazette notice number 125, is it 86? Yes. Uh, did the governor ever get a degazettement of that date where she was supposed to address the Meru County Assembly? No, she did not. Did your office ever receive any letter cancelling the invitation for the governor to attend? No letter. No letter. But did you ever get to hear of any lamentations that would affect the governor's address to the county assembly of Meru? Yes, I did. We wish honorable chair and the committee to Yes, uh, we are going to play video KMSIC.
attached to rather uploaded in the flash disk with the help of the secretariat. And the translation of that video, honorable members, is contained under page five of volume two. Who is that speaking? The speaker of the Counter Assembly of Meru. We, we can pause a bit, Chair. So, who are the people you've been able to identify in that video? I've, uh, I've seen the speaker of the County Assembly of Meru. The name? Uh, the name is Ayub Bundi Solomon. And who else? I've also seen the Rinda of Majority. The name? Evans Mawira Karia. I've seen the Rinda of Minority, Mwenda Idiri. That was a witness here yesterday? Yes. I've seen the mover of the motion, who is uh, also the Minority Whip, Dennis Kiogora, DMK. Yes. I've also seen the Deputy Speaker of the County Assembly of Meru. Thank you. Let us uh, proceed with the video. Members after vetting a CC. Now, members of the Patriti, who group the CC, but they have been to a party and the Guruba Banga, we account the Muru Kakita. What are the two? Bogatim and Java Quaria. In Tokira Parenda, Kari Ruania, in Bessie to one fund. Bessie Bet Canadian Ingana, no regate Tai, like the Mugi, all members of Puga. Mwanka area baka karanti guru bethi kani ya mantu ya mbeshe si won't fund na members kwa ya weshima le angawa na hentore nchiao then ubu arago karika baka uba bethi tayari ukarani ya ndi na na angawa na ni onto ibaku baki nyuri mantari ku mantu ya uki makani rongo the movers of the motion and uh, witnesses categorically appeared before this committee and denied that the World Fund was an issue. Kindly explain what the speaker was saying. Uh, the speaker and given three issues. Issue number one. This, before you proceed, this was a day before the governor yeah. was set to appear to the county assembly to address them. Yes, that is on 18th. Thank you. Proceed. One, he said that uh, the ho all the members have agreed, and there will be one. And uh, in the agreement... When you say all the members, there is something the speaker says. How many members? He said 69 members, and him being the 70th member. The 70th, Se me 70th member. Thank you. Proceed. So, then, the, so the speaker counts himself as part of the MCs? Yes. Thank you. Proceed. Then he said... If governor is not going to talk to them, they will not pass the list of the CCs that she and forwarded to them. And what did they want the governor to talk to them about? The what, governor, rather, what was their demand? That was number three. The governor to address the issue of what fund. Thank you. So the issue is two threats. What were the two threats? 
the threats were they are not ready to sit with the governor and they do not allow the governor to address the Count Assembly of Meru on 19th. And in respect to her appointments of CECs? In respect to the appointment of the CECs, they will not uh, pass them unless governor talks to them. Thank you. Let us uh, play another video. Uh, that is a KMS1B. KMS1B. The transcript is found at page four of volume two. Mwa mekaa chini wakasema pia Vile ngavana anasema anu nafasi ya kuongea nao Pia waishimua hata kuwa nafasi ya kumusikiza kesho Siku ambaye alikuwa afanya county address yake Ndiyo sababu tunasema ya kuwa We can have the video post for Gavana. the chair's communication Thank you